Well, good evening. Good to see all of you. Uh, glad to welcome you once again to another Bible study. Uh, goes without saying, got to find the book of Proverbs. Hopefully by this point, you, when you tune in, you've got your Bible open to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 28, if you recall, last week we ended at verse 10. Uh, so it goes without saying, we'll begin at verse 11. Hope all of you are doing well. Uh, we're right about the time many of you uh, probably either have went on vacation or you're scheduled vacation, might be on one right now. Uh, you know, we just celebrated our nation's birth. That's always a good time to vacation. Uh, just bore you with a few details real quick. Maybe some of you that don't know me, you'll get to look a little deeper into me. Uh, when I was a, a young man, uh, my father was a coal miner and they had what they called miner's vacation. They don't have that now, uh, but uh, basically all the mines, uh, they had worked agreement out of the companies, all the mines took their vacations two weeks, the last week of June, first week of July. And I'm telling you, in the Beckley, West Virginia area, those two weeks, you didn't go to the river, you didn't go anywhere, it was packed. And, uh, but we would always, my dad would always load us up and take us down to the beach. And then the 4th of July, they used to uh, race the cars on the actual day, 4th of July, and we'd go to Daytona Speedway, we'd go to the beach. And so the 4th of July to me, always is beach, probably racing, but definitely beach. And personally, this is my personal opinion, everyone, and uh, there's no better place to spend the 4th of July than on the beach. Uh, that's my personal opinion. All of you right now, as many of you say, oh, no, no, it's here and there, and I understand. Uh, that's what they call them opinions. We all have one. Uh, but uh, look with me, if you would, uh, Proverbs 28, verse 11. And you remember last week how Solomon was bouncing forth, bounce back and forth. The Proverbs don't have a set pattern. I mean, you're talking about wealth, and also you're talking about integrity, and then you're talking about national commitment. You're talking about this. There's no, this isn't a, a working story. It was just kind of, uh, I won't say random thoughts, but it was Solomon with his wisdom, pinning down about every subject that you deal with in life. And, and look, read verse 11. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that hath understanding, search him out. Now, this has got a, kind of a double meaning to it. Uh, there's, there's individuals who do not have many, but have a little wisdom and, have, and they can see through. You know, this rich man, he has uh, insulated himself from the regular uh, interactions of the day. And so, uh, you know, this isn't the unusual uh, for someone who has money and, and possessions to not fight the temptation to be proud. Uh, you know, you get looking around and you go out in the garage and you got to, uh, I don't know what, uh, I really don't know what the, the status symbol would be uh, for me. Uh, I got a Dodge or Ram pickup and a Chevy Equinox car. Okay, that's my status. Uh, but uh, at the same degree, uh, you know, I'm sure there's that status vehicle out there. Well, this person can afford that status vehicle. They have their home plus the summer vacation home. Uh, they have other things. So if you're not careful, all of a sudden you'll get looking around and you'll say, boy, look what, look what I have. And, but it says here, you know, there's other proverbs uh, that explains that wisdom exceeds wealth. Now, uh, but every man uh, that, that's gained his wisdom, uh, not through wealth, uh, obviously there's chance pride, but there are people, remember we looked last week, if you, uh, you might be a wise person, steady Eddie, as they say, steady plotting, and just casually went through and, and worked yourself up, and to the point where all of a sudden there, there is this wealth through wisdom. Now, the poor man uh, who uh, has an understanding searches him out. Uh, a poor man with wisdom 
basically the Bible saying a poor man with wisdom exceeds a rich man with pride. Pride uh, trips us up. We, we don't understand. Now there, there's a certain kind of pride that isn't sinful. Uh, I have children and grandchildren and, and when I see my uh, daughters now beautiful mothers and raising children which you know obviously are my grandchildren I'm proud of the, of, of the way that the effort they put in I'm proud of how they, they move forward now, that's, they're not sinful uh, there are some people in the Christian community that you can't even use the word pride even for that they think you're being simple no that's, that's not so, but this pride is when you think that you have done something. You know, the Bible says that every good and perfect, in James, every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. So everything you have, I get it, you went to school, I get it, you work hard 40 through 60 hours, some of you even more than that. I get it, you, you know, and so you've accumulated but the Bible says that God gave you the ability to, to receive that degree. God gave you the ability uh, uh, to uh, master your craft where, where it brings in good income. The Bible says uh, God has done all that. You know, uh, there are some lessons that we can learn in life. You know, but I want to tell you something. And uh, it's been a long time ago. Uh, but, but I can identify with what it's like to, to have things very tight and uh, there's some lessons you learn. Lessons you learn in that, uh, that period when you know, you're not sure exactly. You have to maybe, and I'm probably talking to somebody, you have to give up something. Everybody else is talking about this event, this event, this event. You can't go to this event because you, you have to, uh, to give up a few things to, to, to accomplish whatever it may be. Okay, that isn't wasted. I don't want you to stay there. I don't want you to live there. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to live in that state. But yet there's wisdom to be gained. Uh, you know, during the tight periods of my life, I learned. And, and now that things aren't so tight, uh, uh, you know, I don't take those things for granted. And so you know, I'm hoping that's the case with you. Now look at verse 12. And it says... Uh, when righteous men rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Now, righteous men, when they rejoice, it says there is great glory. Uh, obviously, this is in a plural sense. So, uh, when the right rally and cheer, something good went on. Am I correct? It's been several decades ago. I went to a, a men's conference up in Indianapolis. And uh, there was about 50,000 of us in the stadium singing how great thou art. Never experienced anything like that. But you see, uh, for the most part, it was a Christian community uh, praising God. And there was glory there. And anybody that would have came, even those that didn't know Christ, I'm sure I am satisfied that they would have benefited just hearing that many men singing and praising God. Okay, so it says that when the righteous are praising, when the righteous have a reason to celebrate, maybe that's a better term, when the righteous have a reason to celebrate, there's great gain. There, there's exceptional gain. And, but it also went on to say when the wicked celebrate, when the wicked are praising, a man is hidden. It's not safe. It's not safe to go on the street when the wicked are having a party. It's not safe to go into a neighborhood when the wicked are celebrating. Right? You go into a, a uh, large uh, evangelical church that's promoting Jesus. Hundreds if not thousands of people promoting that. It's a safe environment. It's, it's a, an environment you want to embrace. An environment you want to run into. But then you go a step further and, and you get all of a sudden you, the evil people, the sinners and the, those that are doing poor, they're coming out in the streets and celebrating. You better get away. You know, it's not been too long ago. The media was feeding it and there's no other way to say it. But we had uh, young people uh, 
claiming peaceful protest and there's anything but it's not peaceful when you tear somebody's property out up. it's not peaceful when you uh, burn somebody's property up it's not peaceful that's foolishness but when that was going on people didn't go in the street and celebrate the only people out there were the evil people doing this and so that's what we're, we're seeing here you see when those who live with wisdom and 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 uh, and those who who live righteously, when they rejoice, the whole community benefits. It's good for everyone. There's great glory. Uh, but when a wicked man uh, who is isn't ruling, the culture uh, then is affected negatively. Uh, you know, when the wicked arise uh, and, and and freedoms. Uh, will slowly diminish. And we're seeing that. Don't give up any. Uh, I, I will not voluntarily give up any of my freedoms. Uh, every time there's, uh, there's, a, there's a fringe group who would love to take our, our freedoms. Uh, they call themselves the cancel culture. They may not call themselves, but that's what they are. You pose them so you can't have a platform. Uh, but, but what we're seeing here. Uh, uh, that when righteous people rejoice, everyone benefits. But when the unrighteous rejoice, it, 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 is, it is a scary thing. And, uh, and we see that, you know. Uh, there's commentary that says, The state of a nation is shameful and danger when wise and good men who are only worthy in the name of men withdraw themselves or run into corners and obscure places out of grief and shame and let wickedness publicly uh, uh, run and oppress the righteous. You know, there's a time, I don't know when it is, but there's a time when the righteous must stand up. Every community, you know, in today's culture, we have those that say that we need to progressively accept certain things. Well, I, I think everyone has. We should respect everyone uh, and we should uh, show kindness to everyone. Uh, but yet at the same degree, the Bible plainly says that we want to be in the company of the righteous and not the unrighteous. Uh, if the, when you're in the company of righteous, it's safe and time to rejoice. When you're in the company of unrighteous, it's dangerous and very, very hard. So now look at verse 13. And boy, we're, we're, this is, we're getting into the meat right here. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but who confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. So you know where we're going here. This is repentance. Repentance is the only way. Uh, you know, since Adam and Eve, human instinct leads to cover our sins. If you recall, uh, God put Adam and Eve in a perfect garden, had so many things richly to enjoy. Uh, matter of fact, they were told to enjoy anything they wanted except for one tree. Now, you, you would assume when you're in a tropical garden, which probably had hundreds if not thousands of trees and, and, and uh, fruits and vegetables and, and, and fresh, pristine water, they were just so much, oh, what beauty. But God put one tree. He said, don't, don't mess with that tree. So if you do, you'll die. Uh, and, but, but it drove them crazy. And they had to have that tree. Now, let's don't throw too many stones at Adam and Eve. Uh, all you parents know, uh, if you put a child in a room and you say, don't touch that dish, uh, whatever you do today, don't touch that dish, well, guess what? There'll be little mudgy fingerprints on that dish when you come home from work because it's just something in our human nature when we're told not to do something or restrict from it we we're going to do it if we get the opportunity but adam and eve did they sent and the bible described them as running and hiding in the garden uh, just recently a few weeks back faith baptist church had what we call our vacation bible school it was the first week of june and uh Miss Schill and I had the pleasure of teaching second and third graders. Man, what a, what, a, what a wonderful age group. You know, they're just old enough where they're grasping some things, yet they're still young enough where they'll 
they'll embrace some some of the more silly things that you might do at BBS. They are the perfect age group. Second and third graders are the class you want to teach if you do uh, Bible school. But we, you know, there was this period where Adam and Eve ran and hid, and and the kids found out immediately. You know, we 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 gave them the rhetorical question. When we sin, do we run and hide from God, or do we run to God? And boy, they all, we can't hide from God. Nobody can hide from God. And before the week, they got stronger and stronger in their answers. And I do believe, and I hope, it's my prayer, that those that were in that class at least embrace the fact that you can't hide your sins from God. So you can't. You can't cover them up. You know, it says here, you know, our conscience makes us ashamed. I understand that. You know, uh, probably every person I'm talking to right now, especially if you're an adult like Pastor Jim, if you're a graying adult like Pastor Jim, you definitely would fit this category. There's something in your life that you just wish you could take an eraser and take it out. It's embarrassing. It's shameful. You suffered pain. It was a huge mistake. You just wish you could remove it. But we all know by now you can't. You know, uh, you can't unscramble eggs, right? You just can't. And so we see that it's our natural instinct to want to cover sin, but it doesn't work. It doesn't benefit any of us. And what it actually does is it hinders from doing the right thing, the only thing that can give us help. I can't do anything about those mistakes in my life, but I can ask Jesus to forgive me. Of them. I can attempt to forgive myself of them. I can uh, remove, I can learn from them, right? Uh, you know, that, that, that's what you do. When, when you recognize, you know, that those mistakes were sin. They were big sin. And so you, you learn from them. You know, but the uh, Bible goes on and says, he who covers his sins, uh, you know, that, that's pride covering your sin. Uh, we think, well, I, I just covered this up. Nobody will know. God won't know. Uh, but it also says, who confesses and forsakes and will have mercy. You see, uh, when we repent, we receive mercy, forgiveness. You know, this is the way to overcome uh, spiritual shortcomings, uh, you know, in this life. We, we want mercy. You know, nobody wants to stand before God. I had a fellow tell me one time, and, and I'm not calling him out necessarily, but he said, when I get to God, I just want what's coming to me. Well, I don't know what motivated him to have that viewpoint, but none of us want what's coming to us. When we stand before God, when this life's over, we want mercy. We want grace. Nothing more or nothing less. Grace and mercy. And you can only receive grace and mercy through repentance. So if you're listening to me right now, and there's something that you have attempted to cover up from God, you've covered up from others. We'll worry about others later. But right now, let's just talk. If you're listening to me right now and there's something on your heart that's burdening you and you know you're ashamed of it and you wish it never happened, just go to Jesus. Jesus knows already. The Bible says he's omniscient. He knows everything. So he knows already. Just go to him and say, Father, Forgive me of whatever that is. And Lord, help me forgive myself of whatever that is. And try not to cover it up anymore. Come open. Open up to God. Say, God, you're right. I'm a sinner. What do I do next? Do that right now. Will you do that? Uh, Father, we ask you to be with those that are being spoke to by your spirit. Lord, many of us convicted of sin right now. Just ask you to be with us now to quit covering them up and to confess them and to bring them to you. And Lord, we just ask you to be with this group that's listening tonight. Bless them for their attendance. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen.